everyone's gotten familiar with prompt engineering and created some digital art or two. You've been in the midst of it. What is the current state of the union? First, I want to take a step back, which is that AI as a field, it's really interesting and exciting because if you zoom all the way out, it looks like this exponential curve. But then if you look more deeply, it's kind of this like curve where you get a breakthrough and then you plateau a bit and you get a breakthrough and you plateau and then you get another breakthrough. And so it's, and, and then the breakthroughs are happening faster and faster, but it's sort of, um, it's a story of, of, of multiple breakthroughs. The most, so the, the initial breakthrough might've been just convolutional neural nets in the first place, which was, um, you know, I think it was 2012 or 2013 is when AlexNet, which is the first application of, of deep learning and deep neural networks to- Wait, hold on, I'm gonna say, the original breakthrough was John McCarthy and Lisp way back in the <laughs> 60s, okay? Like, it, if you're going really OG, but sorry, you, you are right. Fair enough, fair enough, yes, yes. Uh, I'm, uh, I'll tell the brief, the brief history of, of deep learning. By the way, deep learning did, was, was a technology that people were thinking about long before then, but this was like the first time it, it just beat everything. And then, mm-hmm. um, and, and it was this incredible time where, where it's sort of like the initial phase of deep learning. And then we had the AlphaGo breakthrough and reinforcement, deep reinforcement learning um, became this incredible breakthrough in, in the overall technology. Then we had GANs, which is sort of the precursor to a lot of the image generation stuff that we have today, which mm-hmm. is uh, which we'll definitely talk about. Um, and then, uh, and then most recently, the sort of transformer um, has mm-hmm. been this uh, has been this huge breakthrough, which has led to a lot of what we see today. And I think that the recent so it's important to walk through this trend because there's undercurrents that power all of this. The mm-hmm. undercurrents that power everything in AI are the compute, the data, and the algorithms. Um, Compute has continued to just get better and better and better and better. Moore's law continues. Um, in particular, the GPUs keep getting better and better. You know, NVIDIA has done incredible work in building this yep. platform that powers all of AI. And, um, and uh, that, is, that has been a huge accelerant for everything that's, that's happening in AI. Data is another undercurrent. Um, you know, frankly, this is a, a, one of the incredible things that the internet has given us is that because the internet is constantly accumulating more and more and more data every single day, all this data is being fed into these algorithms and enabling these algorithms to accomplish just incredible things. And then we've continued to improve on the algorithm side. Okay, so now where are we at today? We're at a point where I think we're starting to see AI do some pretty magical things. So if you look at large language models or these large diffusion models, mid-journey, stable diffusion, Dolly 2, et cetera, um, look at Whisper, you look at all these systems, they not only are able to understand a lot of this data. So we had been at the point where we could understand images and videos and audio and text, et cetera. But now we can actually generate very convincing data quite easily. You know, we have now Mm -hmm. image generation capabilities. We have text generation capabilities. uh, We have, um, we now have video generation. Um, There's a lot of very exciting research that show these sort of very convincing short GIFs um, using AI. You have audio generation, of course, which has been there. And so one of the ways I frame this in terms of just the history of the internet is that, you know, web 1.0 was read, web 2.0 was read and write. Um, I'm going to skip over what everyone calls web three. And then hey now, now. <laughs> <laughs> now you have um, read, write, and then computer read and computer write. And so I think there's this huge moment in computing um, because now you have these systems that can that can generate and understand in this um, in this very scalable way. Now, mm-hmm. the, if you talk to a lot of people in AI, a lot mm-hmm. of the hardcore AI people, this is simply one step on the road to AGI or artificial general intelligence, mm-hmm. which you know um, organizations like OpenAI or DeepMind they're all aiming towards that to get to a world where you know AI systems um, can do almost anything a human can do better than a human, and uh, I think it's always, you know, there's always this point of speculate, mass speculation with the community on how close are we and yeah. and when mm-hmm. are we going to get there. Some people believe that you just take what we have today and you keep scaling it up, and you're going to get there, um, and that could be true. Um, but uh, but other people think that you need fundamentally more breakthroughs, and I think it's it's uh, that's one of the, mm-hmm. the great debates in AI. But we're we're at this incredible point, um, and uh, and I think we're at a point where finally, you know. People have talked about AI as a platform technology for so long. And I think we're finally at a point where you're actually seeing that play out, where the sort of level of innovation on top of these AI systems is mm-hmm. just is just absolutely astronomical. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, The Good Time Show by Aarti and Shriram.